since such a record company existed in England, they're more or less inventing independent record labels or reinventing them. You got a husband now. You don't leave your bit fingers lying in the wedding cake. You used to hold him right in your hand. I bet it took all he could take. Sometimes I wish that I could stop you from talking when I hear the sell of things that you and I took an afternoon off and took my tape down and I went to this office in West London and there was just one girl in the office, there was nobody there. Next thing I know I'm called up and they said you're going to get to make an album. We're going to call you Elvis. I said are you out of your mind? Stiff had this energy and they were thriving off the, all these things that were happening in London, all this punk stuff. I was reading about it in the papers and suddenly I found myself involved in a company that actually had something to do with it, you know. He was starting to make some noise in the music press. We'd play uh, some clubs and a fight would break out and there just happened to be a photographer there and they catch the fight and they put the, you know, it was like, there was always something going on, you know what I mean? Something out of the ordinary. I want to know one thing. What? Are you serious? Or are you just making, trying That's to make good. me laugh? It's what? Nothing, a rude word. Next question. No, no, what was the rude word? And we didn't know this was going out live, you know. Dirty f***. No, again. <laughs> you dirty f***. What a clever boy. What a f***. Well, that's it for tonight. The following day was incredible. Every newspaper ran headlines, the filth and the fury. Punk, we call it filthy lucre. I had to go to work that day and sat with everybody, you know, uh, there were sort of like middle-aged guys reading the newspaper, the steam coming out of their ears. It was really funny. What about the word punk? It means worthless, nasty. Johnny Rotten, are you happy with this word? No, the press gave us it. It's their problem, not ours. We never called ourselves punk. One week after EMI dumped the Sex Pistols, A&M Records picked them up. Before EMI could get rid of them, it had to buy off the contract. And here they were, signing a new contract that could make them a lot of money, and they already had a song to record for A&M in honor of the Queen's Jubilee. You thought you'd gotten rid of us, didn't you? But you were wrong, old bean. Cause we're back with a vengeance. Go take the queen, my son. At that time, nobody in England said anything bad about the Queen. There was this most incredible attempt to stop anybody hearing it and buying it. We could no longer play anywhere. The records were never going to be heard on the radio. They were banned. We could take a boat on the Thames and we could play on the water a quarter of a mile behind the Queen's flotilla. The boat was finally surrounded by the river police. I was arrested and spent the night in jail. And God Save the Queen did become number one. You cannot affect change unless you attack the very things that are keeping you down. The class system in Britain, this is perpetuated continually. There was such paranoia around the city. Paul Cook was violently attacked. Johnny Rotten and Chris Thomas were attacked with knives. I, funnily enough, wasn't attacked at all. Really, all that I seen was a bunch of spotty kids being naughty. But somehow, <laughs> it worked. We hit on something there, not deliberately so, instinctively. The album came out. It was again a public scandal. The name was considered too vulgar and we were destined to go to America to 
tour. It was Malcolm's idea when the Pistols came over to America not to play the typical rock star hangouts, uh, not to come to CBGB's and not to go to the Whiskey in Los Angeles, but to come and play in America. We played at bars that were basically in shopping centers, and uh, we played someplace in Oklahoma City and Dallas and God knows where, all these uh, places that were not really at all on any kind of standard rock tour route. Um, but there were bars that local bands used to play in, so they would come in and just play for these people who wanted to hear rock and roll, and it was pretty rowdy and pretty loose and pretty real. He put us right out there in the boonies, you know, deliverance. I felt like we were just like a circus, you know what I mean? I can't believe someone didn't get shot. I didn't give a shit about the music anymore. You know, it didn't, it didn't matter. You know, it was all about, you know, just... We were, we were all off the edge, totally wasted all the time. It was great, that's what, you know, music's meant to be. You know, I think that's where rock is going and where it's going to stay. No fun, it is no fun at all. No fun. So my sound was really horrible. Sid was like, up, he didn't play any notes. And John was like, you know, Mr. Righteous and, you know, dig my life, you know what I mean? What's the purpose of this? This ain't how it used to be like, you know? And uh, we were playing like shit yeah, and everyone was loving it. <laughs> Ever get the feeling you've been cheated? When I said that on stage, ever get the feeling you've been cheated, I meant that for us. We had to perform this, this stuff, because that's what it had become by then. Just stuff, just rock and roll, just trundling out night after night. It, it, it lost its point. It was too much like a Rolling Stones on tour affair. Too big. And indeed, when things get that way, then you should stop. It's the easiest thing in the world to just stop. So, you don't want to be a pop star, just stop being one. The Sex Pistols came along, made an incredible amount of chaos, and then broke up, you know? And left this, you know, left everyone else to clean up their mess. And no record company wanted to um, touch anybody after the Sex Pistols um, who, who was in a punk band. I liked the Sex Pistols, but um, they were just there for a second. They were gone really fast, and and by the time the Sex Pistols had come and gone, there were all these great L.A. bands playing. Back in America, punk began to take a different form. For the artist, it brought success, fraught with creative dangers. For the audience, the danger was fast turning real. The time that we began X, it was a frightening time because people didn't want to know about um, uh, what, what we were talking about. What we wrote about was, was how estranged we were, and we wrote a lot about being poor and seeing a lot of wealthy people, because it was still the Hollywood scene. There were still movie stars and rock stars and producers and people getting big deals. There was still Fleetwood Mac, and we were so different from that. X was one of the uh, most exciting bands I'd ever come across. I couldn't believe how good they were, and I couldn't believe that they were actually poetic. The lyrics had that kind of street, beatnik impact. Took me back to 58, 60, 62, when the beats were at their height, and I thought, man, this is the same kind of stuff. Everything went along just great until 
at some point the audiences went from being relatively intelligent and understanding interesting people to kind of scary young kids who like to spit at the bands a lot.